With the Belgian Grand Prix coming up at Spa at the end of the August break, I can't help thinking about what I think was one of the, not only one of the greatest wins at Spa, but one of the greatest Grand Prix wins of all time. And that is John Surtees drive to victory for Ferrari at Spa in 66 in the rain. It dried out later in the race, but formidable conditions. It was a race when so many cars went off on the opening lap, including, of course, Jackie Stewart in the factory BRM, who had a, a life-changing history of racing-changing accident, which resulted really in seatbelts coming into Formula One and a lot of the other aspects of Jackie's safety campaign. Here it has to be said that I don't think any other individual has done more for the safety of racing drivers in Formula One than Sir Jackie Stewart. That all happened at Spa 66, but on that same day, John Surtees, CBE, scored an amazing win for Ferrari. And I categorize that for three different reasons. If you were going to race at the Nürburgring, the old Nürburgring or Spa, you always had to be prepared for a uh, situation where here you were dry, there you were wet, etc. Weather conditions uh, very frequently were quite different all around the circuit. Um, I saw this on motorcycles when I was racing there and uh, obviously in the cars. We sat on the grid. Of course you didn't have to make a decision about rain tyres etc because there were no rain tyres. There was one tyre uh, and this was a, a treaded tyre. Although uh, different makes, Joachim uh, who was the main opposition with the Cooper Maserati, Joachim Rint, um, had uh, the tyre which had the larger grooves, etc. in it. Uh, and this, uh, you know, when, it, when the torrential rain came, that really sort of helped a little. So that brought about the tactics that I played in the race. Because I went off and uh, Rouge and then up the hill and down into Bourneville. You know, some people carry the cocoa bends. <laughs> Bourneville, this long right hand which keeps on going and was so vital uh, to get right for the speed which would take you all the way down uh, to the far side of the circuit. And uh, going into Bourneville, what did I get? Those ominous... <laughs> Uh, spots and everything else of rain all come in uh, on my goggles and so um, and immediately the thing was take a wider line yeah. off the normal racing line uh, for a bit of precaution and the same thing applied and the rain intensified as we went round and then the sort of uh, second lap and third lap it, it really came down and of course you had all that uh, carnage, uh, where cars went off this way, that way and everywhere. Uh, in uh, this day and age, of course, immediately there would be a safety car or a red flag. But uh, no, it, it didn't happen. And um, I took a conscious decision, a uh, conscious decision. If you go down the motorway and you follow a car, what do you see? You see the tracks. You see the tracks of that car, etc. Uh, and I had to make a decision uh, to maintain the sort of speed along there. Uh, aquaplaning was a, was a major factor. So uh, I decided uh, that I would, I sort of obviously saw the source and etc. that there was nobody else really in it. So I uh, made a decision, okay, let's see what Joachim can do. And I'll stay in the tracks. It meant that Visibility uh, was not that great. You, in fact, just sort of followed, followed the uh, rain uh, spray, etc. But what you were doing is following those wheel tracks, and that was the one thing which did did show up. Uh, and so um, I just sat in his tracks, and I stayed there for a few laps. Why it was at its very worst, uh, but as the track started to drain, I decided that uh, the safest thing was in fact to take lead again. So I took the lead again at, uh, at Bourneville. I uh, 
I took my wide line round there and went round the outside there. It was satisfying because the fact is, uh, you know, I'd been very, very critical of the car up until that point. Uh, Franco Rocchi, the chief engine uh, designer, etc., at Ferrari, had come up with a slightly revised cylinder head, and so uh, we had a little more horsepower uh, for Spa uh, up for uh, the uh, event at the beginning of the year, like Monaco, etc. There we had a three litre engine which was being talked about as being, I think, 330 horsepower or something. And in fact, you know, it was a 290. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and I got rather irate about this uh, when Jackie Stewart in a 2.2 BRM went past me down the straight <laughs> at uh, Silverstone in the Nun Championship race. However, for Spa it was a little better and because Spa you can keep the momentum going, the extra weight of the car also didn't count quite so much as the stop-start circuits. So the car uh, was born, and I was happy in that I was being able to, you know, put it on pole. Well, and the fastest man ever around Spa at that point, averaging 144 odd. And dominate, uh, and, and basically dominate the race. Um, tell, me about, you, tell me about the master kink in qualifying in the dry. Um, the car actually we got you know handling handling pretty pretty good, and so uh, you know touch and go, and you had to make certain you used every little bit of road to make it as straight as possible. But uh, generally, uh, you got through you got through that uh, with uh, just a, a, a bit of a lift. You're talking 170, uh, touching on 180 mile an hour. The postscript of that awesome win in the Belgian Grand Prix by John for Ferrari at Spa in the wet was that he walked away from the team after that. He had the World Championship in his hands, but he walked away on principle. Two things really. One, how hard he had had to fight to get more power for the V12. And there's a lot of uh, behind the scenes uh, drama going on as well with Ferrari in John's mind, possibly favoring Lorenzo Bandini as well, John's teammate at the time. And secondly, uh, he had had a big accident at Mossport in the Can-Am race the previous winter, driving his own Lola T70 Can-Am car, great car. Uh, big shunt at the first corner. And for a while, his life had been right on the edge but he recovered well and was very put out when Ferrari didn't trust him enough to want to give him the number one status drive for the factory team at Le Mans because they didn't think he was fit enough. And John insisted that he was. Indeed, um, he'd been very quick prior to that, particularly at Monza. But uh, on principle, then he walked away and he joined, would you believe, the Cooper Maserati team, which at the time was being run by Roy Salvadori, with a mechanic there called Ron Dennis. He did a very short test at Silverstone, went to the next race, the French Grand Prix, at Rans with teammate Jochen Rint, ironically, and out qualified Jochen first drive in the car.